Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Alyssa, and I am the Gallery and Public Programs Manager at Art Starts in Schools. This month of Explores, we're exploring the theme of mark making. Mark making is as simple as making a mark on something else. So here, I've made a dot on my piece of paper, and I've made a mark. But marks can also be different shapes, different sizes, um, and we can explore making them in lots of different ways. Um, last week, Kay was showing us how we can make marks from different distances. So we can make marks really, really close up, and we can also use rulers or other materials that extend our marks from a further distance and try making marks from far away. If you were around last week, you would also know that this month we are exploring mark making in collaboration with our friends and family members or anyone that you would like to make with. Kay last week explored um, making a few different things while looking at how to make things from different distances. And they've shared what they made last week with me. So they didn't keep the things that they made they shared them with me so that now I can look at what they made and see what I can create with um, the things that they shared with me. So let's take a look at what Kay shared with me. So Kay shared these different pieces with me. So I have here a face, I have a few different shapes, that could be different things. These here kind of look like leaves, but they could also be interpreted in lots of different ways. So we're gonna have fun with these pieces. I have another very interesting face um, and this piece. And these ones here could be changed and shaped into different ways. So for example, I could play around with these pieces because Kay has given me permission to change what they've made. So I could make them into literal people, with interesting bodies, and make them look something like this. I could also move some pieces around. For instance, I could make them into little bugs and create a scene um, 
that involves these two characters. I could also cut these apart or tear them or change them or add color to them. So Kay has given me permission to play with the things that they made last week and to create something new. So this week with these creations, I'm going to be exploring tone and mood. So we're going to be thinking about what kind of world these characters could live in? What kinds of marks can we make to change the world that these characters could live in? And what's the feeling in these spaces? So for today, the materials that you're going to be needing are the pieces um, from that you've shared or exchanged with your friends. So if you haven't watched last week's video, I encourage you to watch that video um, before watching this one. Um, and once you've shared pieces with a friend, um, you can then exchange those and use those as part of your materials for today. We're also going to be exploring using different types of paper. So you could use papers that are different colors, different sizes, different textures. Uh, they could be uh, paper from uh, newspapers that you have from the recycling bin, uh, from coloring books. Try to find some papers that are different from each other um, or that have some kind of interesting pattern or texture. Um, we're going to be using scissors, although uh, if you do not have permission from an adult to use a pair of scissors, you can always tear your piece of paper. It is just as fun. And lastly, we're going to need our mark making tools. So mark making tools can be anything that makes a mark on a piece of paper. Like I said earlier, they could be coloring markers, they could be um, Sharpies, pencils, pencil crayons, um, whatever that you have at home that leaves a mark on a piece of paper. So for our warm up, we're going to start by imagining that this blue piece of paper or whatever piece of paper that you've chosen to work with, that your piece of paper is the background of a scene. So we don't wanna decide yet if it's going to be under the ocean, uh, if it's going to be in the middle of a forest, if it's an outer space. We're just gonna imagine that this space here is gonna be the background for a story that these characters, these marks and these pieces of paper are going to exist. But first, we're just going to explore making marks of different sizes. So I want you to find a mark making tool um, that can make really, really thin and small marks. So I've chosen a coloring pencil here um, because with a coloring pencil, I have the ability to make something super light or super thin. So I'm going to start by exploring a really thin and small mark on my piece of paper. I'm creating a line from top to bottom. It's not exactly straight, it's quite thin. And here we go. Now I'm gonna try making a mark that is bigger and thick and more bold on my piece of paper and I'm gonna see what happens. So here with my lighter marks, they're less visible, they're quite light, and they create a kind of, almost like a, a, a simple sketch of a forest. Maybe these could be trees in the distance. And with my thicker marker, I'm gonna to try to make something really different. So a mark that is large, more courageous on my piece of paper here. I'm making a really bold choice. And here I have now a very large mark. So when I look at these differences in marks, my really light and small marks over here and my really big thick marks 
over here. What do we notice about the differences between these marks and those marks? What kind of feeling do the different types of marks make? When I make lighter tone or, or softer marks over here, it almost seems like the things that I'm drawing are perhaps further into the distance or um, smaller in size. Um, and the ones that are, are larger and thicker seem more important on my piece of paper because they're easier to spot, they're larger. Um, and in this case, you know, they're taking up quite a lot of space on my piece of paper. What could these marks represent? What could they be? These might be trees, like I imagined at the beginning in the distance. Perhaps this is a building close and up front. If I put my little characters in this place, perhaps one of them is going on an exploration in the forest and another one is maybe inside of the building or maybe standing in front of the building. When I put these characters in relationship with the place that I've just created, what changes? What's happening now in this place with the marks that I've created? Where might they be? With the marks that you've made on your piece of paper and the creations that your friend or family member has shared with you, what does your creation now look like? Where do the characters or the pieces that you have, where are they existing on your piece of paper? So we're gonna try now a new backdrop. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put these marks aside for now. And I'm going to use actually a really small piece of paper. So this is a ripped lined piece of paper um, it's less than half of what would normally be the size of a typical paper. And it kind of already has marks on it, if you think about it. These lines that exist on this piece of paper are already there, and they're going to have an impact on my scene, on my background. So what happens now when I think about these marks in relationship to, these piece, to this piece of paper? Are these characters, are these pieces now suddenly giants in comparison to the scene that I have here? What kinds of marks can I explore adding to this background? So imagining that this half piece of paper is my new background, I'm going to start to make marks imagining that my characters here are giant bugs that are now flying over this little miniature world. What kinds of marks do I want to make that will create the feeling of a really, really small world? So if these bugs are like the giants and the big creatures of this world, what, what, what types of marks or what types of things might we find down here? So I'm going to explore for the next little bit, making really small marks on this piece of paper and creating a really small world, perhaps with tiny little bugs or seeds or other things that I can think of that are really small. What are you going to explore with your piece of paper? Did you also choose a small piece of paper like I did? Would you like to try exploring a small miniature world with me? All right, here we go.
Okay. Here's my miniature world. What did you end up making? I imagined in this tiny little scene in this miniature world um, that below these giant bugs, um, which seem pretty content, they both look happy to be here or a little bit crazed. Um, <laughs> there are little bugs and other smaller creatures that perhaps these bigger bugs are preying on. So maybe they're wanting to eat some of these smaller creatures. I put worms underground, blades of grass, some small little plants or weeds, and a, a system of roots underground from the plants that are growing above ground. These are some of the things that I have put in my world what happened in your miniature world? What things did you imagine being really small and what types of marks did you make on your paper? What feeling, what mood does this scene create? What mood do the marks that I've made um, create? Do they make me feel happy? Do they make me feel scared? like these creatures are about to eat all of the smaller insects? Um, do they make me feel uh, sad? Maybe this world seems lonely or um, maybe it's lacking in color. Maybe there's not enough color in this world. How does your world make you feel? Okay, we're gonna explore a third type of scene together. And I'm going to put these marks uh, to the side before we move on to the next one. So for my last scene, I'm going to imagine that the characters that I have here are now instead of giants, really, really tiny. And the world that I'm going to make is going to be much, much bigger. All right. Let's collect as many large pieces of paper now as we can, and we're going to make marks and create a much larger world. Are you ready? Okay. Suddenly, with all of these extra pieces of paper, and I can rearrange them, I can cut them, I can reshape my world, but now with this much larger setting, instead of being giants in the world, these characters are suddenly a little bit less significant. They're smaller. We don't notice them as quickly as we would have in the last scene where they were surrounding my little miniature world. So this time I'm going to explore making large, bold marks to see what kind of world I can create when I make really courageous and big marks on my piece of paper. What's going to happen to the world? Will it be an outer space world? Will it be um, a world somewhere here on, uh, or a space somewhere here on earth, whether it's um, in the middle of a city, or um, inside of your, your home or around your home, what kind of place are we going to create? So I'm gonna continue exploring making large marks on this piece of paper. So making thick marks, bold marks, and I'm not gonna decide quite yet what this world is going to be, but I'm just going to explore making really big marks and see what happens to this world or this place that I'm creating. All right, let's see what happens. Here we go.
made lots of different bold, courageous, loud marks on these pieces of paper. And they're all of different sizes. <clears throat> Some of them take up the entire piece of paper. Other marks that I've made are a little bit smaller, but still loud and bright and fun to look at. What have I made with all of these different pieces, these different marks? What kind of a world could this be? What kind of a feeling does my world offer? Does the mood or the feeling of this place feel pleasant, happy, um, enjoyable? Does it feel chaotic, um, angry, um, sad, confusing? What have I done here? What what did I make? When I start to put the pieces that Kay shared with me in relationship with this world that I've created, what happens? Does the feeling change? Suddenly now, the creatures that I made, because I have so many other really intense colors, marks, and lines happening in this place, these two creatures are suddenly less noticeable. In our last world, they were big and they were giant. But here, because we have lots of different marks that are catching our attention and that we can notice more easily, these characters suddenly seem smaller and maybe a little bit more hidden within the mess that I've created. Does what I've made here with the red and the blue and the purple and green, does it feel like any particular place? With my marks, can I create a world? Could this here be an ocean or a lake? that perhaps one of my characters is on a boat ride in? Could some of these other marks be um, part of the land in this world? Or maybe there are trees that grow? What happens if I make this into land? Maybe this character isn't a person, but a monkey that's climbing in the tree. What about this red background? It's such a bright color. Is the red background perhaps a fire that is taking place in the distance? Is there something burning in my picture? Or is the sun setting and the sky is red because the sun is setting behind it? What about this mark? Could this be a lightning in the background? Is there lightning um, in my sky? Could this be a tree? perhaps with different berries or fruits growing on it. So if I imagine it as a tree, I could also add fruit to my tree. What is this shape that I've made? If I put it above, could it become a cloud that's floating in the sky? What kind of a feeling does this world create? How does my picture make you feel? What about the picture that you've made? As you play around with the materials that you have in front of you and change perhaps the world and how you lay it out, what kind of feeling does it give you? What kind of world can you shape? 
what if instead of this being land and water, I explore something different? What if I imagine this place as being an amusement park? Maybe this here is now a roller coaster that my friend here is riding. Maybe this is another ride, perhaps a, a tower of terror at an amusement park. What if this here is a climbing gym? And maybe each of these dots is a rock that this friend of mine here can climb. And perhaps this one could be uh, monkey bars, also part of the climbing gym. When I change my background and the position of the pieces that I have here, suddenly it tells a different story. The marks that I've made create a new world. What different types of worlds can the pieces that you have made marks on, what kind of worlds can you make with them? What story does that new place tell? Does this place suddenly, although I've used the same materials, does this place suddenly feel um, fun and exciting? like an amusement park with different colors and all of the different things that you can climb and ride are in bright, vibrant colors? Or does it feel really intense and overwhelming because I've used such different variety and color and perhaps it feels really overwhelming and chaotic? All right, I'm gonna slowly take apart the world here that I've created. And although I'm not going to keep the pieces here that I've made and the marks that I made on these pieces of paper, I am now going to set aside the world pieces that I've created as well as the pieces that Kay made for me. And I'm now gonna pass it on to another person um, who is going to continue this activity and make something new out of all of these pieces. So next week, our workshop is going to be with Payson, who is, our, who is our public programs assistant, and he's going to be using all of these different pieces to explore mark making in a different way. So I'm not going to keep them, but I'm going to gather them together so that I can now pass on the things that I have made over to Payson and continue exploring this activity next week. So although I'm not keeping what I've made, one thing that I am gonna keep with me is something that I've learned. And one thing that I learned today um, while I was exploring is that even though I can, I can make marks and not have a really specific plan of what I'm going to make, for example, when I was making these marks, I was just having fun making different loud and big marks on my piece of paper and I didn't know exactly what type of world I was going to make with these marks, but they turned into pieces that I could use in different ways. And I'm going to explore that again in a future workshop. What did you learn this week? What did you enjoy exploring today as you were making along with me? What happened as you were making different marks of different sizes and shapes in your space? All right, I hope that you join us next week and please share the pieces that you have made today with a friend. You could pass them back to the same friend you made with last week, or you could pass them along to a different friend or family member or caretaker uh, that is in your maker space with you so that they can continue working along with the materials and the ready-mades that you've made next week. All right. I'm going to leave my camera on as I clean up my space and I encourage you to clean along with me. See you next week.